Before we begin, thank you very much to Coach JD for joining my Patreon campaign. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, Coach uh, subbed at the highest level, which means they get a review request, which I'm thinking next week is going to be like a catch-up week on a lot of Patreon requests. So expect a lot of random things. Uh, expect a lot of weird things that people have been asking me to do. Uh, but that is my plan at the moment, and we might do a few later this week, too. Just see, just uh, depends on how the news shakes up. But yeah, that officially catches me up. I am all out of shout-outs. So once again, thank you to everyone who kept the streak up for so long. You know, I knew it would fade out eventually, but I think, what was this, four and a half months? I think that's a solid performance. I think that's something to be happy about. So, thank you for everyone who got me that far, and yeah, tune in tomorrow to see if the actual intro comes back. It's been a while, right? And there's no, in like, the intro's so lame. It's, it's not even like a real flashy YouTube intro, that's the hilarious part. Oh well. Alright, so let's talk Transformers Masterpiece. So, this came out of Tokyo Toy Show 2023. And I think there's some interesting answers here uh, because one of the reps from TFW got to ask a few questions and we got some interesting answers. All right, so uh, just to go over this really quick, uh, the Porsche license is under discussion. Now, after Porsche was such a big brand for Rise of the Beast, that really should not be a, uh, that shouldn't be a surprise. And it's nice to see because it opens up some options that I think we've been waiting for a long time out of Masterpiece. Uh, but ultimately, it's up to Porsche to give the green light to make uh, Masterpiece, uh, not to not not Hasbro to, or Takara. So it's all on them. It's all on Porsche if they want to allow a Masterpiece Transformer to be to be made. Um, let's see, he got showed images of the rumored Masterpiece Cliff Jumper and said he cannot comment on that. Um, yeah, now. Even if it's out there, even if people see it, of course, they are not going to be able to legally discuss it until the toy is actually approved for release. Again, that will require Porsche to get involved because Cliff Jumper is a Porsche, a very squished Porsche, but he is a Porsche. Um, and, and there is still the possibility that that is just a reverse engineer knockoff that's been floating around eBay, right? So just in case that's the case, he also would not have been able to comment on it. Uh, future reissues of Masterpiece 44, Hound, etc. are on the table of discussion. Doesn't surprise me with the aftermarket on some Masterpiece toys that they would want to reissue some, especially ones like Hound that had a pretty bad reputation for quality control, uh, similar to how they did a 2.0 on Masterpiece Rodimus Prime on, on a second run. Um, similar to how they upgraded a lot of the components there, I would not be surprised to see a better made or a, or an altered hound in order to make sure that its QC issues do not get repeated. Uh, future Masterpiece MPGs will not stay at the 30 centimeter size. Uh, will not. Uh, whether they change their mind or not is to be determined. So that does tell me that they are planning more for Masterpiece uh, Gatai. Um what that means, if it's going to be bigger or small, I assume bigger because anything after this, um, yeah, you're going to want your masterpieces to like tower o over the rest of the collection, right? That would make sense. Um, you know, especially now that we're getting into like, uh, well, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a whole thing with combiners, etc. here. All right. So higher ups, uh, Takara top me, <laughs> top me. Um, executives, directors, I've mentioned, are preventing the decision of when to finish up G1, but the hope is there. That is an interesting statement. That tells me the designers are actually eager and have hope of finishing the G1 lineup, but the management of Takara is refusing it. That's a little different. And then we get the, the thing we've already talked about, which is the confirmation of Masterpiece Rhinox. The number and date have not been decided yet. We just know that it is actually in development. All right. So based on all of that, um, the biggest chunk out of there, obviously, is that Takara Tomy's big, big bean counters and their big name people 
are the reason why we do not have a finished collection of Masterpiece G1. Because obviously we don't want it to trickle out so slowly that you know we are all geriatric by the time we have a complete collection of Masterpiece G1. Now, obviously if we go to every G1 toy they could possibly make, that's going to happen no matter what. However, you at least want a few of the casts complete, right? I would say... At the very least, the first two years would be uh, some of the collectors would want complete. And then year three is a completely different beast. So uh, let's actually look into this. So I've uh, I've compiled lists. I say compiled. I've gone to TF Wiki and I've just copy pasted. But uh, I want to show you the list here. Because here's the 84 cast of the original toy line. Everything highlighted in green we have got in Masterpiece form. Now some things on this... I do not think will ever be in Masterpiece or need to be in Masterpiece. The Chrono Form, obviously. Uh, the Power Dashers, obviously. Um, I'm not even sure those came out in Japan. Well, well, the Chrono Form did. Different toy line. But point being, point being, this is what we have to work with when we talk about the 84 cast. The biggest thing here is that a lot of mini-bots have not been touched by Masterpiece outside of the obvious Bumblebee. Brawn, Cliff Jumper, which is possible now, Gears, Huffer, and Wind Charger, all, uh, all have been skipped over so far, which is weird. I know the mini bots are not as well remembered, or they didn't, we weren't nearly as prominent. I mean, there's characters there that had their own episodes, you know, like, you know, like, you know, Grappler and Hoist had like their one or two episodes. And they got masterpieces. You know, Gears has an episode all of his own. That would, you know, he gets a masterpiece. Uh, that, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, but yeah, if we look at like the main core stuff that could be here, really the only outliers at this point are Jazz and Mirage. And we know that that is a licensing thing that is stopping them from happening. Now, with this new cooperation with Porsche, Jazz is now technically possible if, if, they are if they uh if if they are uh benevolent enough to allow that to be made uh hello porsche please be nice to us um yeah um but yeah like that's really it like the omnibots are a very very distant maybe but again i don't think they really would go for that a little bit too obscure i think um but yeah the 84 cast is literally just like a bunch of mini bots and two main autobots away from being done if we look at the 85 cast, there's a lot more gaps, but then we get a lot more uh, we get a lot more differences. Now there's some things in here that Takara would not do. The deluxe Insecticons, the uh, Autobot deluxe vehicles, those were US releases. We're not going to see those over here. We're not going to see those in Masterpiece. Uh, but this does open up a few bigger uh, and obviously the the train set that's listed here. I probably should have deleted some of these. Um, but um the ones that we are looking at here, uh, more mini bots, so like Beachcomber, Cosmos, Power Glide, Sea Spray, Warpath, and that becomes a scale issue, I feel, because Warpath at times was depicted as around the mini bot size, but also sometimes he was around the, the normal bot size, and then of course the tank mode would have to be pretty freaking big. Uh, so where so how do you size Warpath? Well, you know, in what realm do you scale Warpath? I presume you prioritize the robot mode, just make him a tiny tank. Other things, Top Spin and Twin Twists, I do not expect. Insecticons would be an interesting, maybe. Insecticons were prominent enough. I would be, I would not be surprised to see them. Uh, Dinobots, this one seems huge. This one seems huge to me. The fact that we have gone this far in the Masterpiece and we still do not have four of the five Dinobots? I mean, considering that is one of the most popular uh, sets to release... Uh, on third party is masterpiece scale Dinobots. It shocks me that Takara has not capitalized on that. It's it's a weird choice. It's a really weird choice. In fact, like the way that the original Grimlock came out, I'm surprised there isn't a 2.0. I don't know if they're just not as big a deal in Japan, but hey, sell them through Hasbro Pulse. They'll sell no problem. But there is one, the issue there is that we are currently doing leader class Dinobots. Snarl is just now coming out. Swoop, we still haven't even seen yet. Um, we'll probably see him toward the end of the year. I think we're not going to get any more Masterpiece Dinobots until those leader classes finish up. 
Uh, but let's look through some of the other names here. Perceptor is a prob is very probable. Uh, he was pretty prominent. Blaster as well. Bl one of Blaster's cassettes has a masterpiece mold. Steel Jaw does, and it wasn't even released as Steel Jaw. <laughs> it was Night Prowler. That's super weird. There's a masterpiece Night Prowler before there is a Blaster, but we're kind of waiting on that one. We thought that was a precursor, and it still hasn't happened. Uh, then we get into some of those things like. Uh, Constructicons. I mean, obviously, if like if they do another combiner, it would have to be the Constructicons first. Triple changers. That's an engineering conundrum. Um, yeah, uh, and we've seen masterpiece. We've seen masterpiece quality stuff come out of third party that tackles triple changers a lot. In my opinion, most of them sacrifice too much or get uh, way too involved of a transformation to be fun. Personal preference, I admit. But you can see, if we go into the 85 cast, there's plenty of more options they could go through that haven't been touched. And then there is the 86, which is like almost a blank slate. Hot Rod, Rodimus Prime, and Ultra Magnus are the only ones on this list. Oh, and uh, keep in mind, this is a list of toys, not characters. So I should also have a mark on here for RC. So that's a that's a slight mishap, on oversight on my part here. But... Really, only four. Only four. So, no Blur, no Cup yet, no Cyclonus, no Scourge, no Galvatron? No Galvatron. But this in lies in the problems we've seen before. Most of the, most of the year three is combiners, triple changers, or minor characters that are very unlikely for Masterpiece, like, like Battle Chargers and Gnaw. And then you've got the unreleased uh, Minibots. Um, yeah, and... That, that starts getting into problematic spaces. And obviously, you're not going to see Masterpiece, Trypticon, Metroplex. You're just not. You're just not. They would be like $4,000 pieces. Yeah, that's not happening. You know, they'd have to be Unicron size to be like in scale to Masterpiece in the least, in the slightest. So yeah, I think Season 3, like the 86 line is very sparing in what it could actually do. So with all that said, let us discuss our options here. So obviously, uh, if you've not seen it, here's your here's your uh, cliff jumper. This is obviously the most likely to occur because assuming this is not just a clever knockoff, uh, this is pretty much done and just ready for production. They probably this probably got engineered around the time they signed the deal with Porsche in order to produce. Mirage for Rise of the Beasts. They had to get. They would have to get that on board pretty early. Remember, the movie was delayed a year after the principal filming had already been done, which meant the Porsche license was done years ago. So they probably produced this in anticipation of being able to release it, but that approval has not gone through yet. They are currently working on it, and the same would go for Jazz. Jazz is like the biggest glaring like hole in your G1 Masterpiece collection. And I feel like it's a matter of time. It's just a matter of, probably just a matter of, like any business decision, it's going to come down to money. It's going to come down to how much Porsche gets out of this. But yeah, as far as future Masterpiece goes, you're definitely looking at these two being very possible here in the next year or so. Probably Cliff Jumper first, since he's basically done. Uh, you're also taking a look at Masterpiece Beast Wars. So this is... This is where I feel like Takara is really hoping to kind of stretch things out and try to keep Masterpiece having normal releases before they can get around to finishing Generation 1. Because the thing is, and once you wrap up, once you cap off G1, that's it. You know, you're done. Now they could just reissue those toys. They could do like remodels like uh, Convoy 3.0 to make them more cartoon accurate. But there's only so many where that would apply and actually be worth upgrading to. So I don't really, it's it's hard to say like how many of those they could get away with if they wanted to stretch G1 out. So when that's your big seller, I can absolutely understand. Even if it just means people keep paying attention to upcoming Masterpiece stuff just by refusing to give you what you want, refusing to complete the line, that is a marketing strategy. And it's not a surprising one for a company like Takara to go to. You know, if that's your cash cow, you would also be hesitant to run it dry. You might want to see how long you can go before 
you know, like, because they might be able to, like, sit on jazz for another five years, and then once, like, you know, once the, the if there's a decline in masterpiece collecting, oh, now we're going to do jazz. Now we're going to do jazz. Now we're going to get you. Now we're going to, now we're going to get you back. It's, it's that kind of thing. It's those kind of business choices. The combiners are another obvious direction because we have seen so, those lists. So many of the upcoming, the toys that they have not done yet are combiner characters. And I really do feel like it depends on how the train bots do. Now, every time I hear someone comment about the train bots, it's because there's broke. Uh, knees, especially, seem to be pretty susceptible to damage on these things. If that is the issue, if that is the thing, like, this is going to be rough. This is going to be really, really rough to get other combiner characters out. I mean, especially when you're talking, you know, this is like a six-piece combiner. Imagine how expensive, like, the combiner leaders are going to be of a five-piece Scramble City-style combiner. And then try to figure out, not only are they going to have to accomplish, like, keep in mind, this is a Devastator-style combiner. He doesn't scramble city. He is, like, dedicated spots for each of his components. If we start getting into stunt cons, aerial bots, protective bots, etc., then we have to start accounting for the Scramble City ability, that now all of them have to be able to work in every position, and then, then you have to figure out all the combination, all of you. Oh my god, that'd be so complicated. Oh, and of course, Masterpiece has done something similar to this, but, you know, like, it's a different story when you're talking, like, Takara Tomy Engineering and, like, what they accomplished throughout their Masterpiece line. It would be a really tough call. It'd be a really tough call. Also, like, do you, like, and then we get, so we start talking about scale again. You know, because obviously, like, in, in vehicle mode, a lot of these do not scale to each other. You know, you know, like, jet, you know, Starscream in vehicle mode is way smaller uh, when you go next to, like, Optimus Prime in vehicle mode. Uh, so we're not really worried about that. But, like, the combiner, like, the core piece is going to be huge. That's why I kind of think Devastator would be next, because they are all the uniform size. Same way that Raiden worked. And they don't have to work, worry about Scramble City. So we do see more Katai. I definitely think it's going to be Devastator first. So, so there. Uh, and yeah, then I'm really hesitant about what they, how they would handle the rest. Uh, we talked about triple changers briefly. Now the now now there are some triple changers. I think they would be very easy to do. If you look at the original G1 Astro Train, that's actually very viable to do at Masterpiece scale because even the G1 toy really doesn't sacrifice much in any of its modes in order to look the way it does a little bit of you know like a little bit of chunkiness in the shuttle mode but that can be smoothed out pretty easily um the there's some proportions in the robot mode that are off modern engineering will make that very easy to fix i feel like astro train would definitely be a masterpiece to look out for in the next few years um but that does open up pandora's box once you do one you're probably going to be expected to do all the others that leaves now. Now, obviously, like I'm, I'm showing the Star Toys Blitzwing here because I think it's the most perfect-looking masterpiece Blitzwing I've seen. So obviously, it can be done. But then you look at things like, you look at ones like Octane, and I don't think any Octane toy has particularly looked that good. So that is, you can account for that. Um, and then I think like Sandstorm would be difficult to do at masterpiece scale. You know, I mean, that's that all that starts getting kind of rough. We'll see. We'll see. I think you see at least Astro Train. I think Astro Train is at least what you see next. And then what do you do? What do you do after that? So this is the 87 lineup of characters. And do you really see anyone that you would run? Now, obviously, there's pet favorites. I would love to see Masterpiece Technobots. I know it's never going to happen. But really, you're, all your major characters are in those first three years. When they talk about completing Generation 1, they're not talking about doing monster bots. They're not talking about doing, uh, you know, target masters. They're talking about finishing the first three years, like the original cartoon series cast. That's all they're really concerned about. Now, in that, you're going to be looking at the Autobot Headmasters, which are a much bigger deal in Japan, uh, Chrome Dome especially. Uh, I could see Masterpiece Headmasters being done at some point, but I really don't think you're going to see Throttle Bots. You're not going to see uh, clones, or you're not going to see Punch Counter Punch. 
Um, they're just not big enough characters. They're just not things that are going to appeal to like a mass audience. In the third party market where you can, you know, where you can like make 400 pieces of something and sell through it, that's fine. But when you're doing masterpiece scale, you're t doing mass retail, uh, you're talking thousands of pieces, that's going to be a much harder sell to get something like a third party, you know, or like an, an official masterpiece repugnous off the ground or anything like that. So I really do think that when they talk about, I, I honestly feel like when they do the entirety of the first three years of G1 cast, I think they're just going to shut it down. I don't think you're going to see Masterpiece outside of that, outside of little characters here and there. Brainstorm, Chrome Dome, the, all the head all the Autobot headmasters at least. Yes, I think those you see. I don't think you ever see a Pretender. Um, I don't think you see anyone who's a dedicated target master, uh, you know, like, you know, like Misfire, Sure Shot, them. Um, I feel like after that, it's just going to be very much dotting in who they feel is big enough for a toy. They felt Star Saber was big enough for a masterpiece because of a fan vote, obviously. So that's really the only time they've approached G1 outside the original years. The only other d d way, the only other depiction that I can see that happening to is going to be this guy. As a masterpiece toy, I think Jinrai would be fantastic. Um, you know, you could include all the modes. This is not a very complex toy. This is not really a super complex toy. Uh, this would be very good for Takara to do at Masterpiece scale at some point. Give it the scale of a, you know, you know kind of give it the scale of a Star Saber. You know, you don't have to make the Optimus Prime core as big as Optimus Prime normally is because it's Jinrai, it's a different character. Yeah, I think this is, uh, I think that is the future of MP, is like, one, they're going to try and finish up at least the first two years of G1, and then everything else is just going to be dotted in. An 86 cast member here, a headmaster here, yo, we'll throw in Super Jinrai, because Hasbro can release it as Power Master Prime in the US, and that's where your future probably lies. Um, just, it's a far more, like, spread out, sporadic statement. But it is interesting that designers at Takara are actually hoping to finish G1 while the upper branch says no. Draw it out as long as possible. So it's going to be interesting in the last, next coming years to see how that war pans out. And to actually see how many Masterpiece releases are actually G1 based in the next few years. Because it feels like it's going to be changed a lot. But... Those are the musings. That's what. That's the state of Masterpiece today. So, thank you for watching. I hope you're at least a little bit informed about what's going on in the highest end of Transformers. And hopefully, I will see you next time. We're going to have to get your names for the books. You, Payo One. William Curant. Roll me a deception check. I thought their name was Payne. Roll a disadvantage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, was like, that was like the opposite of the help action there. You, Goblin. Uh, first name D's? <laughs> Watch your tongue. <laughs>